they basically, you know, 24-7 all hands on deck, uh, focusing on the war on the one hand, on the battlefield. Uh, but now they have the second front, which is people and economy. So what has it been like over the last few days? Is it, it sounds like the, the electricity has been going on and off. Um, in my apartment, in my home, um, the electricity has been so far in the last three days, in the last, uh, I guess, uh, uh, 72 hours, maybe for five hours total. Wow. Um, so once electricity is off, uh, it gets really cold real quick because the building system system uh, shuts down. Um, the second challenge um, is, uh, it, so basically it's the heating challenge and it gets cold. The second one is water. For the first 30 hours after the strike, uh, the water was not here. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry about saying this, but basically you had uh, toilets clogged, uh, you know, quite quickly. Um, and But we figured that out. We, like, uh, you know, went to a store, but uh, even before the strike, uh, we have stockpiled on the water. So with water, I think that problem is manageable. Mm -hmm. It's the heating which is the issue. I understand. Gosh. How... How prepared were you for this? You mentioned a generator. Were you? Did you have sort of plans in place for if if energy and water supplies were disrupted? Yes, uh, I did personally. Uh, both uh, at the school, at the university where I'm the president, and uh, at my own home. But of course, these plans, you know, they have to be tested, and everything is different from what you thought it would be. And uh, about half of my plans are irrelevant, so we have to innovate and adjust on the way. For example, you know. I thought, okay, guys, I'm going to install this uh, Tesla-like battery. Thank God I can afford them. Uh, most people in Ukraine can't. And, uh, you know, you're talking a, uh, to a person from a very privileged position. I have a connection. Uh, you know, I have a phone, uh, iPhone. I'm talking to you. Uh, most people not in that position currently, so my, in a much worse position than me. But anyway, I, I, I thought I installed this Tesla or Tesla-like uh, Chinese uh, batteries, and when there's a blockout, I will have enough uh, power. You know, I, I just didn't expect that there would be blackouts lasting, you know, 30, 70 hours. No battery can help you for that period of time. So, you know, half of my plans are just, you know, uh, I have to start from, uh, from scratch. Yeah. I noted as well, I was looking through um, what you've been tweeting over the last few days. You mentioned the university in which you work. How is that being affected by disruptions to services like electricity and water, etc.? We have uh, invested much more thought and actually money into the university, set up the idea there even if I'm called, you know, or our staff are called students, we go to the university and, you know, we are together there. So we have power generators there and they run the first floor and the underground shelters. Uh, we also have uh, food, uh, well, you know, like basic food, uh, energy uh, kind of food. Uh, we have water. Uh, we have Wi-Fi, um, two separate providers with satellite Wi-Fi. But, you know, this week everything got tested. The satellite providers at some point, one provider, you know, uh, was a spotty. The service was spotty, so we had to do a backup plan. Thank God we had it. Uh, but the generator actually, you know, what we didn't anticipate is that uh, um, a lot of people from the neighboring um Houses, I guess, started coming to us to charge uh, the devices, to get warm, to stay. Yesterday, uh, you know, tens, if not hundreds, not yet hundreds, but tens of people showed up. Mm -hmm. um, and that overpowers our first floor. Um, and uh, our um, our generator collapsed a couple of times. So we're now ordering uh, more powerful generators. But of course, there is nothing on the market. So we need to wait for weeks, if not months, um, you know. Yeah. struggling here to find generators. Understood, yeah. There must be such high demand for them. And Timothy, your work continues at, at the School of Economics in Kyiv and as an advisor as well to the Zelensky administration. Can you just give us an insight into uh, perhaps how President Zelensky is, how the administration is functioning and, and, and indeed how your work is progressing? The administration is functioning, the university is functioning, um, the, you know, it's hard for me to say exactly how the president Zelensky is functioning now. Um, I had much more access when I was a, um, the minister of economy. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know I, 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 sometimes I go to meetings some, with them. Sometimes uh, I talk to people who have been to meetings. They're basically, you know, 24 seven, all hands on deck. Uh, focusing on the war on the one hand, on the battlefield. Uh, but now they have the second front, which is people and economy. So they've been uh, 
uh, creating or opening up the shelters, you know, thousands of them across the country in the last several days. They have been they have been preparing for that, but now they are really deploying them where people simply can come in and get warm. Um, but the work uh, goes on. It's a little bit, you know, of surreal feeling. You you live at the same time in two worlds. Uh, in a modern 20, 21st century European country and uh, almost in a medieval um, you know, s- s- environment. Uh, yesterday when I was getting to my car, it was pitch black and uh, my battery in the phone ran out. Uh, so I really was walking one centimeter at a time, you know, crawling by, by a wall, holding a wall to get to my car. Uh, and it was really, really a you know, refreshing experience to bring me back to the basics. But at the same time, we also had yesterday a nice event uh, of an analytical presentation in front of uh, several ambassadors here in Kiev on Crimea platform, on uh, um, what our um, assessment of the economy and human rights situation in Crimea is. So, you know, uh, two hours, you're, you're, like, uh, you're like as if you were in London, and then the next two hours, you're trying to put this generator, and it's cold, and you're freezing, and there is no light, and the, the generator collapses, you know. Uh, it's uh, up and down.